we were building out this new sealed room, we needed a custom duct made to connect this jet air filtration's exhaust to the outside of the sealed room. This felt like the perfect chance to try out Fusion 360's sheet metal tools. There's nothing complicated about the duct we had made, but it felt great to design what we needed, send it out to a local shop, and have it fit perfectly when we received it back. If you're near Portland, check out Vinjays. They made this duct for us, and they're a fantastic resource if you're not already an HVAC pro. Here's the sealed room. The reason for this dust filtration system in the first place is that we're pulling in dust to a confined space, and if you don't properly filter and ventilate this stuff, you're essentially creating a very likely explosion scenario. The design is a two-part duct that slips together from both sides of the wall. This lets us easily remove the duct from the outside while the other side is mounted to the jet. To get to Fusion Sheet Metal Tools, open any file and in the design space look for Sheet Metal. First we'll modify the rules, find steel and we'll duplicate that. For our duct we're using 26 gauge galvanized. In this case just modify the thickness, the other settings are fine. Let's create a sketch, pick a plane, and we're going to draw our first profile of our duct. These dimensions are what we want for the inside of the duct. Also, sheet metal fabrication doesn't have the same tolerances as CNC work. Make your dimensions in sixteenths, not thousands. Notice we don't close the sketch box because in reality this would be one sheet of metal bent three times to create the box shape. Next, create a flange and select your sketch profile and type a length for your duct. Here we just used a little bit of an offset to close up that gap. It was a little too wide. Uh, I think we did 50, 150 thou to close that up a little bit. We're going to go back to the flange tool, select that top edge, and we're going to add a half inch flange. That's going to be what we attach to our dust collection system. We're going to zip through and do the other one on the bottom. Same thing, half inch. Uh, that's about all the space we had. On the sides, we do a little bit wider. We're going to do a one inch flange. So same thing, we're clicking the flange button and just making those one inch. To make the other half of the duct, let's make a construction plane two inches offset from the original sketch plane. To make a new sketch on the construction plane, type P for project and select the new plane. We're going to use our original sketch to project those lines and offset them outward as this duct will slip over the first duct. To create the second duct, we'll use the flange tool again, select the new profile we just made, and type in a length. Our duct needs to be 13 inches long. We need to close up that gap on the side, just a little bit too wide, so we're going to offset the face about a quarter of an inch. Let's put flanges on the rest of these edges that are outside the wall. We're just going to make them all one inch. And we're done modeling. That was pretty easy. So you can see how the two parts slip together here and also how they fit with the machine. The duct doesn't fit on the output exhaust grill perfectly, but it does work really well and it gives it a larger space than needed. We picked up the jet air filtration machine online. It's been working great for us. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out too. Let's make a quick drawing of our sheet metal model. Right click at the top level of your tree and select create drawing. We're going to select uh, anything here just to get started. We have a project drawing template that you can save. They're really nice. Now we're in the drawing mode. I have to say, while it's convenient to have a way to make drawings in Fusion, it leaves much to be desired, like line weight control. Please Autodesk, maybe this year. Anyway, the drawing space is loaded. Your assembly should be ready to drop on the page. Click anywhere to place your base drawing and then select the appropriate scale in the view. Now let's add some other views of the parts, or projections, which are oriented around the base drawing. Click the projected view button and then your base drawing. Hover over different sides of your base drawing and click to create different projected drawings. You should show all aspects that are different but not redundant. Don't worry if it doesn't fit right. Like all things, it's easy to change the scale or style quickly in Fusion. Here I realized that a letter size sheet isn't going to work, so I changed to an 11 by 17 and the title block just scales to fit. Now it's time for dimensions. Click the button or type D to create a dimension. Fusion's dimensions are fairly intuitive. It can you essentially dimension anything with the same dimension tool. From here you can click any part of the drawing and drag the dimensions out to a second point. Play around, I think you'll get it. Again, don't make redundant dimensions. You want one dimension for a thing and that's all. This reduces potential for mistakes and is easier for the viewer. Another good tip is to space your dimensions equally off parts, and in a way that is the easiest to understand. Don't squeeze stuff in, white space is your friend. 
This is like having good handwriting, which I don't, but I can make up for that by making simple, well-made drawings. Here's the finished drawing we sent out to Vinjays. Notice we've pared down the trailing digits to just two. This thing is getting made on a shear and a press break, not a laser. You can give tolerances, but I'd assume most don't on a duck drawing. An axon is a great tool to help orient somebody on the full assembly or just give a nice 3D view. I love how they look and almost always include one. I also think they really help people understand your parts. The last step is to export a PDF. Again, uncheck line weights or you'll get a non-pleasing Aaron Draplin version of your drawing. Don't believe me? Try it, it's rough. One last feature of Fusion Sheet Metal Tools is creating a flat file. It's really simple. You select the face that will stay in place and Fusion unwraps the design into a flat part. This is useful for laying out a job or sending a file to a shop that would laser or water cut parts for you. From the flat file creation mode, you can also export a DXF, which is what a laser needs to cut your files. Once you create a flat file, it lives in the tray on the left. Just activate the bullet next to the flat pattern and you're back in. We don't do much metal work, but this was pretty satisfying to use Fusion to design and have made exactly what we wanted. Chris worked on this for us, and I think he had just as much experience as I did in sheet metal and Fusion. In my case, I'd use it to design boxes, which is also a great use, and you should try that out. This duck is working great for us. I really believe you should trust in trade experts to advise you on how to make the best end product. You can do much more with Fusion sheet metal tools, so play around and let us know if you find something we missed. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.